Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going to talk about the derivative markets. Now, before we move ahead, let us let us understand what do you mean by a derivative. So, now when you want to understand the value of a particular stock, how do we consider that? Usually, we try to understand, we study that profit and loss statements and the balance sheet and try to understand what how much profit is it making what are its future plans so we first study the company and on the basis of that we determine what should be the value of a stock but when we talk about derivatives as a security we kind of the value of that security is basically based on the value of any other security so now if we take stocks as an underlining asset then the value of a derivative will be based on the value of that stock if the value of the stock changes then the value of the derivative also changes now it's not necessary to take only stocks as an underlining asset we can take commodities interest rates bonds anything can be taken as an underlining asset and we are mainly in cfe we are going to mainly focus on the four uh, types of derivatives which is forwards futures options and swaps along with that they have also covered in brief derivatives like forward rate agreements and credit derivatives now in this video we are going to focus mainly on forwards and futures before we move ahead let's understand what is a difference between a forward commitment and a contingent claim forwards futures and swaps they are called as a forward commitments which means that in them we make a commitment that there is basically a legal binding between two parties and they are obliged to follow the commitment they are obliged to keep the commitment they have made whereas when we talk about the contingent claim contingent claim is actually based on any other event so what do you mean what do i mean by that so if i say that if this event occurs then i will use my right otherwise i won't use my right you will understand this more in detail when we understand future forward swaps options and credit derivatives in detail so let's first understand what do we mean by forward contract so let's say you are a farmer and you grow wheat okay so now uh now you are worried about what hap what will happen if when my wheat actually grows the market condition is not right what if when the wheat grows uh the price is not correct you are scared that what if when i'm willing to sell my wheat the price of the wheat is not as much as i want so you are afraid that the price of the wheat will fall in future at the same time suppose i am a factory owner and i make bread so wheat is my main ingredient now 3 months from now i am afraid what if when i go to the market to buy wheat the prices of wheat would have increased so you as a seller are worried that the price of the wheat will fall in future whereas i as a buyer of wheat i am afraid that the price of the wheat will rise in future so i and you would decide to to make an agreement that 3 months from now i will buy wheat from you at 20 rupees per kg and you will sell wheat to me at 20 rupees per kg so this agreement is nothing but forward rate a uh, forward contract okay so we have determine the price and we have determine how much quantity of wheat do we sell or buy from each other at 
a specific time which i say for example is 3 months now this forward rate contract is basically traded over the counter that is two parties come to come in a place and they kind of negotiate the trade so there is no particular place where this contract takes place now if in future the price of the of wheat so three months from now if the price of the wheat increases then it is beneficial to me because now i'm getting wheat at a lower price and you are going to bear the loss because now you will have to sell the sell wheat to me at a lower price which we had determined at the beginning of the contract so this is basically what do you mean by a forward contract now forward contract can be a deliverable or can be cash settled which I, what do i mean by it deliverable means that if we agree to you know buy if i agree to buy the wheat and you agree to sell it to me then you will have to deliver the wheat to me three months from now otherwise we can just you know we just decide that okay this is what we are going to uh, buy and sell and all you will do is you will just pay me the difference so if i am i am the winner if the price of the wheat wheat increases in future that means that i have a positive value then you will pay it to me you will pay the difference between the market price and the price that we have agreed on in the contract the difference between the two will be paid by you to me and if it is other way around if the price of the wheat falls then that difference will be paid by me to you now when we are talking about forward contracts there is a counter party risk it is possible that 3 months 3 months from now you would say that no now i'm not paying the not giving you the wheat at the predetermined price because now the price of the wheat has increased so that is a drawback of forward contract diced so it is us who decides how much quantity we want at what price we want for how much duration we want also always remember we are going to study this in detail in the next chapter but always remember that the contract prices so the contract price is set in such a way that the value of the forward contract in the beginning is always zero so in the beginning when we are coming into the contract neither me nor you have a positive or a negative value now we will understand what do you mean by futures contract future contract is very similar to forward contracts it is the same thing but there is only a difference that for, there are some differences between the two so the main difference is that future contracts is basically traded on an organized exchanges say in india we have nsc bsc so the futures contract it is always traded on an organized exchanges and there is no counterparty risk because the clearing house is a counterparty to each trade so if i say that i want to take a long position in xyz future contract then the clearing house will be taking a short position and if i'm someone who wants to take a short position then the clearing house will take a long position now along with that it is also important to understand the main difference between the future and the forward contract is that there is a need of an initial margin so when we uh, when we come into the future contract we have to deposit an initial amount of money now that initial amount of money is basically acting as a way to reduce the risk so now if i have taken a long position okay and if the price of if i take a long position it means that i want to buy the underlining asset at the end of the future period so if the pri if the price of that underlining asset increases then the initial margin that i have paid 
so that the difference between the price we had agreed upon and the price that we are paying the difference between the two will be deducted from my account and and the same thing happens if the price if the price decreases that is the market price of the asset decreases then the difference between the price we had agreed upon and the market price so the difference between the two will be deposited in my account because i have a positive value so basically that happens and now if the margin it if it falls below a maintenance margin so there is some amount of margin that you need to maintain in your account and if the balance in your account falls below that margin then you need to deposit the money as much that is required to bring the balance back to the initial margin so that is the main difference between the future and the forward because in forward we don't have to you know deposit any margin but in futures we do have to deposit a margin which actually helps us to you know reduce the counterparty risk also when i say that you know the price keep changing every day so what happens is that they don't take the last closing price they take uh, they take the average of the prices of an asset during the closing period so that no one can manipulate the prices okay if they take only the last price like last price of the trading day then there are there is a high chance that anyone could manipulate the price but if they take the averages of prices in the closing period then then there is no scope for manipulation also since it is you know settled at the end of each day the benefit of it is that the value of the contract at the end of each trading day is zero okay so then again on the next day when the trading starts the value would fluctuate and change which will be settled again at the end of the